Um, are you seeing my presentation now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it works perfect. All right, good. So, um, yes, uh, well, I'm not um, uh, agronomist. Uh, I am an um, economist. And, um, but I've been growing um, grains on my own organic farm since 1999. And I started also together with uh, 11 other farmers in my region where I am from in Norway. Uh, we started the uh, Ökologisk Specialkorn, which is um, a milling business uh, and a seed company for, for, for these old varieties. So I have been growing this and having no really uh, knowledge about it to start with, but just finding seeds that was suitable for our way of uh, farming. Uh, and that has led us into this journey in this Nordic network um, that uh, we are in now. And uh, it has been a remarkable journey uh, where it has been for me both working as a director for this, uh, this uh, milling business that we started and also working for the agriculture authorities uh, in finding first organic ways to grow things and or later more focus on soil and soil uh, health, um, soil quality, uh, ways to improve our practices. Uh, and so what I'm gonna share with you is um, maybe my connection that I don't see the grain as a separate or the plant as a separate thing. It's a part of <clears throat> that uh, ecosystem of, of agriculture, of soil uh, and plants together. And, and for me as a economist, um, it has been very inspiring to go back and look at what is the balance between the economy and the ecology. So it's uh, been the, the, the point to come to the point where, where, where this is coming together. Um, and um, as a, a, a ecological economics. So I'm doing a PhD now in my old age. I'm uh, getting 59 now, so it wasn't the plan. Uh, but uh, somehow we started some new project. You know, this is how is a saying in the Norway, you say um, uh, the road appears uh, when you walk on it. But um, here is also another way with the boat is being created while you're rowing. And that's in a way how I'm feeling it. You throw a piece of wood out on the, on the, on the lake and then you start rowing and then you hope to get to the other side at some point. And uh, so uh, <laughs> that's the, my point, starting point from, from where I am. And uh, what, why is this interesting in this setting? Uh, I think uh, soil, we have been focusing very much on nutritional qualities in grains, but we have then separated it from the soil. And I have been missing that aspect of it. Uh, and on the other side, when it comes to agriculture, like looking at the nutrients in the, in the, in, in the grain has never been a, a, a question. You talk about the yield. So trying to kind of getting these things together. But basically what I am doing now, I'm, I'm, I'm working for Agriculture Center Buskerud. So I am not uh, as a director for this company anymore. So I'm doing a research project, I'm project leader for that, and I'm doing a PhD in uh, ecological economics uh, parallelly. And this project goes together. Um, so <clears throat> uh, just uh, to say we are, we are located at, uh, at uh, a very old agricultural school uh, in, uh, in the region where I'm from, uh, Buskerud. 
uh, which was uh, this farm, the name of this farm actually gave name to the county later. Uh, and now it's been reorganized to a big county and then they're going to be reorganized back. So the politicians are kind of playing with organizations now and we're going back to Buskeru County. So <clears throat> this, this, uh, this, re, uh, this agriculture center, has, it's, it's a county administration. Uh, it's also uh, the agriculture authorities and the municipalities around here, the farmer unions and the Norwegian Extension Service that has their one branch here at, the, at where I am. So the main goal for this uh, soil health um, and carbon capture project is to find ways to improve, to increase the soil organic matter and also to increase the life in the soil by doing DNA samples um, seeing because, I mean, we need to have organic matter in our soil, but if we don't have life in the soil, that doesn't really matter. You can't just put coal in there and think that you are uh, saving the environment. So <clears throat> there is a part of the CO2 capture, but the most important thing is to improve the productivity to, to produce good and healthy food for the future. So <clears throat> we are running this project, but we have partners of the University of Oslo, the Norwegian University of Life Science, uh, Nord University, where I do this, uh, my PhD, and then it's Agrianalyse, which is uh, it's an economic firm doing uh, <clears throat> analysis for, for, for agriculture politics in Norway. And Greenhouse is working with the CO2 certificate uh, problematics, and Smart Soil is doing is practically doing this, uh, the work to get the DNA samples and to do um, to sequestrate the, the DNA. So we are taking, and we have 19 farms that we are working with in the, this region. And quite a few of them uh, are actually growing these old varieties of grain. Um, so we have like five of them, but we have many different. We have conventional, when we have organic, we have uh, um, um, farms with animals, without animals, and we have very many different uh, ways of running their practices. Um, but what we do, they have like one, uh, one plot of about five hectare each, which we are then taking uh, uh, one sample uh, on every five hectare. Uh, and uh, GPS located and we are doing this for for four years we have this uh, starting year in 2020 and we will do till 23 um, for now we want to really do it for 10 years uh, but you know the funding things stops at three so we have to kind of find new ways because we think this is important to look at for a longer period of time uh, so we are measuring a lot of different things. We have doing the standard chemical testing that they are doing, have done uh, in, in, uh, in agriculture, but we also look at the aggregate stability. We look at, uh, we take also a um, uh, more Albrecht analysis. We're sending samples to ward uh, laboratories in the United States, and we get one chemical analyze, uh, analysis and one uh, more biological ones. And then we, of course, the DNA mapping, which is now uh, being uh, come together for, uh, for, for, for two years because it needs a lot of samples to make it economically feasible to do it. So all we are organizing now, I don't have many results to share with you yet because we are organizing all of these things. Um, at this time with the results and we hope that our results for the two uh, first years will be like uh, ready in this summer and we are putting it all together in a big uh, matrix and I want to see uh, formulating these days like a null hypothesis about um, this data collection and see how we can present it in a good way and see if we can say something more about the different ways farms are run and say something about <clears throat> the, um, the, the soil um, uh, quality and situation in the soil 
regarding to the soil organic matter, we are actually doing the LOI, the loss of ignition, the relative change in loss of ignition, because that's the measure we have at the moment that is most secure. And then it's the DNA mapping of, of, of these uh, soils as well. And then, of course, also economic data. So we are doing <clears throat> economic, uh, economic data um, when it comes to contribution return like standard one year, but also to do it in a, in a four year uh, run and also the total economics of the farm, which because it says there is also interesting to see not just from a technical point of view what's the economic return but it's also how much of the farm is farming practice is the income of the farmer in norway we don't have many full-time farmers anymore and they have to have a full job outside the farm what's their motivation of doing what they are doing how can they do it what is the economic situation they are in on the farm or they have a lot of loans, or they kind of squeeze to produce a lot of return. How are they looking at um, their soil fertility or the situation in their soil, in their product system, how for the future and for the next generation and so on. So there's many, many different aspects of that. So of course, also we are doing a lot of visual soil assessments to put this together with all the testings that is done because Basically, uh, in the end of the day, it's the farmer looking at their own soil and, and following their, all, uh, their own um, cycles that are important. So we have different arrangements for this, this thing. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the, the project um, of the... Um, I'm going to stop sharing this one now. Is it up there, isn't it? Stop sharing there. Yeah. Okay, so um, so that's the, 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 the soil health carbon capture project. And in this project, <clears throat> I'm doing this PhD work, which with the economics of it, um, and uh, I have just dived into, into the problematics. So now I am the for, I'm in the middle of the forest and I can't see the forest for all the trees, you know, and uh, hopefully I come out on the other side in a couple of years and I can share all the results with you. But what we are looking at when it comes to the grains is that well, what has been bothering me the whole time is that we have not looked at the new uh, the 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 mineral um, density of the grain. So that's we are doing in one small little plot, where we are testing emmer and dala landvete and a modern variety mirakelvete. So we are doing this with and without compost on a very difficult soil, and we want to see how can we raise the measure. Uh, of the of this this production uh, in in these plots or in in three four years to do to use a very good compost high quality compost with a lot of life in it uh, and also not and then we want to be doing the DNA samples in the root root zones of these plants and see how uh, do they. Uh, this symbiotic relationship between the soil and the roots in these plants. Um, and if we can see some, some tr uh, traits there, that is interesting to see for those farmers that are using the old varieties, how is that beneficial for in the same breath as improving their soil quality? Uh, and improving their farming practice, their fertility. So this is what we hope to see and what may be interesting for, for the community of the grain farmers uh, in the Nordic countries to, to, to look at it, how, how, do, how is this, this developing? This is what I hope to be able to present in, in a year or two um, when we are coming together. So yeah, I think this is what I can, what I can share right now, and, and if you have some questions and some inputs, I'm happy to hear. Thank you.
Yeah, I think the first question is Tuve. Uh, this sounded very interesting. Maybe I can come and for a study visit. I would be so interested. <laughs> I'm at Ås now at NMU. But uh, my question is, how do you, with the visual soil assessment, I was really sort of thinking about doing that, but I was wondering, how do you rate that? How, how do you, how do you um, use it in analysis? The visual? Mm. Um, well, we haven't we haven't put that in. A, we we I think we are we are more looking at how to look at the visual results and then to look at the all the technical results and see how we can understand from those both those perspectives. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question, uh, Mahbub. Hi, thanks for nice presentation. Uh, have you looked for nitrogen, how nitrogen and carbon regulation? Um, yes, there is in the in the in the in the in the uh, chemical analysis. It will be uh, nitrogen availability. Uh, uh, in those analysis, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, Magnus. Hello, very interesting project. Have you, when you analyze these microbes in the soil, have you got any possibility to analyze the micro microbes in the seed that you use when you plant the crop? Because the, the seed should contrib contribute to this microbe in the soil. Right. Uh, no, I haven't uh, thought about that really. So, uh, so, but I can suggest that from the for the microbiologist that they actually do that. So great. That's cool. Thank you. I think the next question is Anders. So at the moment in Denmark, the most popular or. Uh, no, not the most popular, but, but some farmers now starting uh, to do farming based on the uh, soil, soil wide uh, food web. Uh, this relation between bacteria and fungi in the soil. Yeah, are you assessing that the, the relation between bacteria and fungi? Yes, we are. Uh, we are. Yes, uh, that what the DNA is hopefully going to see uh, to to get the a much broader uh, perspective on that as well. That what we have been doing earlier in the 10 previous years I've been working with it, we have been microscoping, and then we have been looking at uh, uh, the, the fungi and, and the bacteria and, and the, and the um, protozoas, so, and, and categorized in those things. And then it has been said that like, you should have like bacteria and, 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 and um, and, uh, and uh, fungi is one to one in a way, uh, as like a rule of thumb. But when I say that to the professor in microbiology, he says, "Well, is don't. that so? Is that so? <laughs> is that so? I don't think that's a truth. You know, it's uh, let's see what we find there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no." <laughs> uh, I, I very much agree with Magnus that that, that even small uh, additions of uh, fungi through seed uh, seed treatment, applying a fungi to the seed to the seed, can actually improve the carbon in the soil. Uh, so, so sometimes uh, only a compost or very small uh, uh, applications of fungi to to the soil can can actually have a, a big impact on on carbon in the soil. Yes, it can, and it's also, I mean, the, but it's also easily destroyed. Uh, so it's like why we don't, usually we haven't found much fungi in the agricultural soil when it's tilled a lot, you know? No. And, um, and it's like just bacteria. And what we found most of the time was just like a lot of bacteria, but it was very inactive bacteria and very uh, monoculture bacteria compared to some, if you look in a very, very good compost where you will find the variety, diversity and intensity. So this is a big question. Uh, 
because everybody talks about the soil organic matter, but if you don't have the life there to make these nutrients available to the plants, so what's the point, you know? Or there is a point, of course, but but it's uh, for for the new for the for the plant, the that part of it, it's 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 not so uh, use, usable. And that's what I learned when I started organic farming. Well, it's not available to the plants, you know. Well, well, why isn't it available to the plants? Because there is no life there. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we will see get the, like a picture of that and and they have quite sophisticated way of showing this dna uh, mapping uh, things now so i'm quite excited about it we haven't seen any results yet it's coming now thank you very much i don't see any more questions ah dylan, dylan. Yes, uh, yeah just yes, a little side note uh, are you not running uh Norsk special cool anymore anders or no i'm not there is a completely new bunch up there now and uh, so i'm uh, it's hard you know when you have been kind of investing everything in in it but now i let it go i let my baby go and um 